Hello everyone, my name is Cody Dorbecker and my artist presentation will be on American painter and sculptor Titus Kapoor. I'm going to talk just a little bit about Titus Kapoor's background. Titus Kapoor was born in 1976 in Kalamazoo, Michigan and now resides in New Haven, Connecticut. His first exposure to art began when he took an art history course at a junior college. From there he taught himself how to paint by visiting galleries and museums. He attended San Jose State University in California where he received his Bachelor of Fine Arts in 2001. He then went on to get his Master's in Fine Arts at Yale School of Art. Titus primarily works with paintings, but also works with sculpture and installations. He has been featured in art galleries such as the MoMA, Seattle Art Museum, Brooklyn Museum, the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C., and many more. Before we get into his work, I want to talk about his process and concepts behind a lot of the work he produces. I'll quote from his website where he describes his aim in his art. Titus Kapoor is an artist whose paintings, sculptures, and installations examine the history of representation by transforming its styles and mediums with formal innovations to emphasize the physicality and dimensionality of the canvas and materials themselves. His practice seeks to dislodge history from its status as the past in order to unearth its contemporary relevance. He cuts, crumples, shrouds, shreds, stitches, tars, twists, binds, erases, breaks, tears, and turns to paintings and sculptures he creates, reconfiguring them into works that reveal unspoken truths about the nature of history. Open areas become active absences, walls enter into the portraits, stretcher bars are exposed, and structures that are typically invisible underneath, behind, or inside the canvas are laid bare to reveal the interiors of the work. In so doing, Kapoor's aim is to reveal something of what has been lost and to investigate the power of a rewritten history. Titus Kapoor's Another Fight for Remembrance was a series of paintings that began as a response to the killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014 and the protests and demonstrations that came after it. Kapoor began to produce these works after the protests and his personal experiences with police aggression. These paintings speak on the black experience and help to reflect the pain and anger that many black Americans felt during this time period. Both works show black protesters with their hands in the air, referencing the famous hands up, don't shoot chant that became popular with the Black Lives Matter movement. They are also covered in white to show this ghostly appearance to them against a dark background, alluding to the numerous black lives lost to police brutality and systematic racism. In the image on the left, even though most of his face is covered, the tear-filled, bloodshot eyes of the man can be seen that further show the pain and anger he is feeling. A gold halo is also placed above his head with the use of gold leaf in the painting. Titus recalls an instance not long after the Ferguson protest that he and his brother were pulled over by the New York Police Department and were accused of stealing artwork. The artwork, in fact, belonged to him and they were released, but he says he did fear for his life when he saw the officers with their hands on their weapons and that luckily he did not end up how Michael Brown sadly did. Shadows of Liberty was Titus's take on famous portraits of 18th and 19th century political figures. An oil painting of George Washington seated on a white horse is quite the notable artwork one would expect of such a famous leader. However, Titus includes cascading fragments of Washington's slave records nailed down from the top of his body and hang down almost to his feet to create this three-dimensional painting. Kapoor explained that classic Yale portraits inspired his reconsideration as a graduate student. As a graduate art student of Washington, the Patriot, and Washington, the slave owner. Pamela Franks, who is the contemporary art curator at the Yale University of Art where the piece hangs, says that the portrait opens a new way of understanding American history for the museum's visitors. Impressions of Liberty showcased in 2017 was a sculpture by Kapoor commissioned by Princeton University in a conscious effort to showcase and understand the racial past of the university. Research found that the school's first nine presidents, as well as early trustees, all owned slaves at one point. The university also found out that it enrolled a number of anti-abolitionist students, and that an alumni gave a pro-slavery speech during a commencement ceremony in 1850. The sculpture installation takes place on the front lawn of the McLean House, home to the university's presidents and Reverend Samuel Finley, who enslaved people there until 1766. In the work, Titus carves a monumental bust of Samuel Finley as an inversion or a sculptural absence. 
He is shown holding a Bible to reference the idea that national horrific practices were believed to be justified by religion. Etched in glass in front of the portrait is, African, is an African-American man, woman, and child. The piece is encased in sycamore wood to reference the nearby sycamore trees that were planted during Finley's time. The concept behind the sculpture raises questions about who is remembered and who is invisible in our accounts of history, both the written and visual. Analogous colors was used for Time Magazine for the June 15, 2020 print during the height of the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor protests. The painting depicts a black mother grieving over the loss of her child. The child is cut out of the canvas and leaves a hollow silhouette to show the mother's loss. Around the painting is a red border that includes the name of 35 black men and women who have lost their lives to police brutality and acts of racism. In the video of George Floyd's death, we can hear him calling out to his deceased mother shortly before he is killed by Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, who kneeled on his neck for nine minutes. The work is meant to display all the pain that black mothers go through and anger they feel losing their child to police brutality and systematic racism. The painting was actually originally a part of a series um, from one of his most recent exhibitions titled From a Tropical Space. In this work, Kapoor presents the haunting narrative of black motherhood, the collective fear and trauma of the disappearance of their children. Kapoor demonstrates the disappearance by physically cutting out and excluding the children from the canvas to show a blank wall underneath. The usage of vibrant colors in each of the paintings helps to heighten the tension of the scenario. In a quote from the Gagosian Art Gallery, from a tropical space sees Titus wield these various methods to create an emotionally saturated visual landscape that is entirely contemporary, just as artists through time have translated the fraught and mercurial socio-political context in which they operate into new and often radical aesthetic modes, so do the pervasive social and cultural anxieties of the world in which we find ourselves resonate through Kapoor's new work. Behind the Myth of Benevolence shows us a portrait of Thomas Jefferson half hanging loosely that reveals another painting of a black woman behind him. In the image, her hair is covered and her bare arm and leg are exposed, suggesting that she is nude. The painting helps to raise the question of the relationship between the two people in the images. Sally Hemings was a slave of Thomas Jefferson's and it is highly suspect suspected with multiple lines of evidence that she and Jefferson had a long sexual relationship with one another and that Jefferson is actually the father of her six children. Titus states that the painting is about both of them and at the same time not about them. He says that the reason it is not about them is because that Sally was actually very fair skinned and was of mixed race. The woman in the portrait is not. She's rather a symbol or a representation of the numerous black women whose, quote, stories have been shrouded by the narratives of our defied founding fathers. He helps to push this concept by having the portrait of the black woman behind the loose covered painting of Thomas Jefferson to show that, if hung properly, the black woman would not be seen at all. The Evidence of Things Unseen was another of Titus's recent exhibitions that took place in a deconsecrated, deconsecrated church in Brussels, Belgium. In this exhibition, he presents new and old work that addresses the issue of representation in Renaissance Christian imagery. The exhibition showcases a variety of mediums from oil paintings to 3D, the three-dimensional sculptures. Works such as Susan and the Elders displays narratives from the Roman Catholic Church that protrudes from the wall, all crumpled and fights its way into the viewer space. Ascension 3 shows the silhouettes of legendary, godlike basketball players that are filled in with religious classical iconography. Jesus Noir shows Jesus' face covered with the face of a young black man and duct taped to the canvas, and many other paintings and sculptures of this cross between black culture and classic imagery. Kapoor goes to talk about the exhibition saying, if we don't amend history by making new images and new representations, we are always going to be excluding ourselves. There certainly is no going forward if we can't look back. Just some closing remarks I have after this artist's presentation. Kapoor's signature approach of deconstructing established iconography and imagery and then rebuilding them with the inclusion of black representation is something I feel needs to be more recognized, especially in the history of this country and how much American history has tried to erase the harm that they have done to black people. Titus does an amazing job of capitalizing on this narrative in his work. I very much enjoyed his work in Ascension 3 because of my love for the game of basketball and crossing that over with religious themes and iconography to try and represent black people in a classical religious work. 
His work is also very prevalent in today's socio-political sphere, which has been heightened by the protests after the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. I thoroughly enjoyed researching the work he has produced in the past decade and look forward to other projects and exhibitions he has planned in the future. Thank you guys so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed.